For several years now, I've been a small business owner. And one of the things I see all the time on social media is a hashtag. Hashtag support small business, hashtag support local business. And I think a lot of people put that out with really good intention, but then their actions do something else. And I can tell that because I see tons of people driving up and down Niagara Falls Boulevard all the time, and they drive right to a large box gym to work with a trainer who may be a high school, just a high school graduate, maybe working their way through college. Doesn't mean they're bad people or bad trainers necessarily, but there's a lot of turnover there. Instead of coming to a place like mine where you have someone who has doctoral level education and many years of training experience, they'll drive right by my place and go to a chain, a large box gym, and send the money out of the area. I'll also see people who say they want to get better, they're serious about getting better, and then they'll drive right by my place and go right to a large box physical therapy clinic, a chain physical therapy clinic per se that has multiple locations all around the state. So it's not really, their actions don't really support their hashtags and words online. So what does that mean for a small business owner like me? That means that the only way that we can survive, my small business, other small businesses, is by working together. We work together with other arms of the community, other small businesses of the community, doing our community outreach, and we really hope that a lot of business will come our way. And it's a challenge. It's a real, real challenge. And I've approached many different personal trainers, yoga instructors, Pilates instructors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, people from all different walks of conservative care light. And a lot of them like the idea. They like the idea, oh yeah, we can trade people back and forth. But unfortunately, an overwhelming amount of these attempts at collaboration go nowhere. So why does this happen? Why, why is this happening? Why do so many trainers resist working with a physical therapist? Why do so many yoga instructors and Pilates instructors resist working with a physical therapist? And I want to use this episode as sort of a longer sales pitch to the trainers and the massage therapists and the yoga instructors and Pilates instructors out there watching this video, I wanna use this video to help you guys understand why you need to work with a physical therapist, especially a physical therapist who's a direct access cash-based physical therapist. And I'll explain why those things are important after the intro. So come on back after the intro, we'll talk about all this stuff, don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me today on the fitness edition of the podcast. This is the Dr. Kroll PT and Fitness Podcast. I am your host, as always, Dr. Lee Kroll, physical therapist. And what we're talking about today, this is more geared for the trainers, the massage therapists, the yoga instructors, Pilates instructors, people that have their own little small business or are independent contractors working out of another place. This is more geared for you. If you're a patient or a client, of these particular people, yoga instructors, Pilates instructors, you can give this message to the people you work with and help their business become better as well. So this is sort of ge um, geared for all of you today. So before I was a physical therapist, I was a fitness trainer. So I came up through the world of fitness training. I got my ACE certification forever ago, and I have a really in-depth view of what goes on in the training profession and I have a really in-depth view of what goes on in the physical therapy profession, so I have a really good idea of how these two can blend together. Let's be straight up and honest here. If you're a personal trainer, if you're a Pilates instructor, if you're a yoga instructor, and you do not have a medical license of some sort, you're not a DPT, you're not a DC, you're not an ATC, you don't have any type of medical license at all, then you should not be diagnosing and treating pain. That's very clear. You should not be doing it. So I see this all the time and I see trainers do this all the time. And it's not that the trainers are bad people. 
I think they just think, okay, I can help you with that low back pain. I can help you with that knee pain. Really honest. If someone is in pain and it's not going away, it's a persistent issue. They need to go see a medical professional for a proper diagnosis because there could be a red flag issue, something that's much, much worse than just, Hey, we have a muscle strain here. So you have to be really careful when you're on the training side, the Pilates side, the yoga side, especially if you're not a medical professional on top of working with that type of group as well. So a good trainer is a really fantastic resource for people. They're the ones that should be in the trenches and on the front lines for helping people keep healthy with activity, exercise, and fitness. And the same goes for Pilates instructors, the same goes for yoga instructors, but for all of those professions, and I've tried to approach many of these people before, there is a reluctance to work with a physical therapist. And I have a lot of feelings as to why, but think about it for yourself. Have you ever been approached by a physical therapist or a chiropractor in terms of collaboration? Why is there so much resistance? Why is there so much, you know, just stubbornness in terms of let's work together and, you know, it's excuses I hear are, well, it's going to cannibalize my profession. I don't want to lose sessions. I don't want to send people out my door because they'll never come back or they won't come back at the same frequency they were coming back before. These are things I've heard all the time. So from a trainer standpoint, from a personal trainer standpoint, it, this goes for Pilates instructors, yoga instructors as well. We can put them all in the same similar super category. But let's go over the biggest reason that you should have a direct access cash-based PT on speed dial, someone that you work with directly, not just someone that you have a business card of in your wallet or your purse, but someone that you are in contact with, someone that you can call and talk about a client back and forth. The biggest reason you should have these people on speed dial is because people get hurt and people have chronic pain issues or unrelenting pain that just will not go away on its own. We can't prevent it completely. Nobody can. We like to think we can, but all we can do is reduce the risk. Nobody out there, there's not a single person, there's not a single program that can completely remove the risk of neuromusculoskeletal injury or pain. It just can't happen. So what is your plan as a trainer, a Pilates instructor, a yoga instructor? What is your plan when one of your clients has pain that just won't go away? Knee pain, back pain, hip pain, shoulder pain, elbow pain, doesn't matter what it is. They have a pain that won't go away. What do you do? You can't diagnose it unless you're a medical professional. If you happen to be a DPT who also teaches yoga, then by all means, have at it, diagnose away. But if you're not, let's say you're a personal trainer, you work at a gym, you own a small gym, you work out of a small gym, you rent space, whatever. What do you do? You can't diagnose it. You can't appropriately diagnose it. You can't appropriately treat it without them seeing a medical professional. So what happens? Let's say you have a client and they're starting to have knee pain or back pain and you send them out to an orthopedic. You say, hey, why don't you go see your physician? Why don't you go see whoever and let's figure out what's going on. So what happens is your client leaves and goes to the orthopedic and now there's a gap. You have no input because you don't talk to that orthopedic. You have no relationship with that orthopedic. You may not even know what orthopedic they're going to, but you don't have a connection. You don't have a bridge there. So when they go to the orthopedic, the orthopedic will probably ask them, what makes your knee pain worse? When did this start? What's going on? What makes it feel better? What have you been doing? What's your activity level? All those are pretty basic and common questions. So when your client tells the orthopedic, oh, I've been working with this trainer, we've been doing this, this, and this, and this, the orthopedic may say right then and there, well, you shouldn't have been doing the squats. You shouldn't have been doing this. You shouldn't have been doing that and this exercise or these exercises here are causing the problem and what that causes your client to do is lose confidence in you so right there you already have a decrease in confidence meaning they're not as likely to come back to you because the orthopedic said well you shouldn't have been doing this now you may have been doing everything appropriate you may have been doing everything right from a trainer standpoint but you're not there to defend yourself and from the client's point of view they're going to take the orthopedics word over years, they're gonna trust them more because they have the degree, because they have the medical license, because diagnosing and treating pain is what they do for a living. So they're going to lose confidence in you and then they may not come back. So you, by having no bridge, by having no contact, you may lose that person. 
Let's say it doesn't happen in the orthopedic's office. The orthopedic may say, well, we're not going to do any imaging yet. We're not going to do any injections or anything. We want you to go see, go to PT. So they go to PT. And again, this PT has no contact with you as the trainer or the yoga instructor or the Pilates instructor or whoever. And the same thing happens. The DPT they're working with says, well, you shouldn't have been doing this. You shouldn't have been doing squatting. You shouldn't have been doing this. You shouldn't have been doing this under that much load or you're doing too many of them. And again, confidence is lost. And I've heard it all the time. All oh, these damn trainers, they shouldn't have been doing this with you. And now you have no bridge back. So again, you have so many cases there or times there where you could have lost your client. You could have lost someone who you told to go see the orthopedic. You looked out for their best interest. But by doing so, without a bridge back, you run the risk of them never coming back to you again, them losing confidence in you, not returning your texts, not returning your calls, and you have no idea why. You have no idea what happened. So the other problem that happens with this is the PT or the orthopedic may have a personal trainer that they already worked with, someone who has beaten you to the punch and collaborated with them. You were too stubborn to collaborate. You didn't want to take the time to collaborate. You didn't want to put in the work to collaborate with a PT, whether you're a personal trainer, a Pilates instructor, a yoga instructor, it doesn't matter. You didn't want to collaborate, but somebody else did. So when that client asked the PT nearing discharge, well, I want to go back to activity. I want to go back to exercise, but you're telling me that what I was doing wasn't any good for me. What do you recommend? They hand them the business card of someone else and say, why don't you go see them? I work with them. I know what they do. I'll send them my recommendations and then you'll come off knowing exactly what to do. They'll come into the session knowing exactly what to do and they can always call me if they need guidance. That trainer, that Pilates instructor, that yoga instructor is already held in higher esteem by that client because they have a good working relationship with that PT. And that's where you lose out if you don't have that relationship, if you just sent them away and didn't take the time to cultivate that relationship, that's leaving a massive hole. Because again, almost every one of your clients is going to go through an issue where they have a certain amount of pain that pops up. It doesn't matter where it is, knee, low back, shoulder, these are common areas. And again, you're not equipped. If you're a PT or a personal trainer, I should say, a Pilates instructor or a yoga instructor, you're not equipped to diagnose that. You shouldn't be diagnosing it and you shouldn't be treating it without a medical professional looking at it first. So because you have no voice in the room, because you don't have a bridge with that medical professional, you lose out. You run the risk of losing out. You run the risk of losing your client. You're relying solely on fierce client loyalty, which may not be there if that confidence in you has been shattered. So why is it so hard that or why is it so important that a direct access cash based pt is part of your sort of speed dial or rolodex if you will aging myself with the rolodex reference but let's reimagine the scenario i just talked about before with a cash based direct access pt on call so for example your client sharon has a complaint of knee pain which isn't going away and she calls you about it. You're supposed to be seeing her on Monday. She calls you on Friday. And you can tell her, you know what? You're supposed to see me on Monday. Why don't you go see the PT guy that I work with instead? Let's call him. Let's call her. Let's figure out when they can see you. If they're direct access cash based, they can probably see you pretty quickly. So let's see them early next week. I'll send them my information. I'll talk to the PT first. Instead of paying me, pay the cash based PT, go see them, let's figure out what's going on and let's figure out what we need to do. So Sharon, your client, goes to see the PT instead of you on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. And the PT gets your notes, maybe a phone call over the weekend, you can talk about your client and say, here's what's going on, here's what we've been doing. You have a voice in the room, the PT knows you, the PT trusts you. The PT will then diagnose the issue. They'll see Sharon, chief complaint of knee pain, and they'll diagnose the issue. They'll figure out what's going on, and they'll make modifications to whatever training you're doing, whatever Pilates you're doing, whatever your, uh, your yoga practice is doing. They'll make those modifications and send them back to you. No loss to you. A couple of sessions, 
right back to you with modifications. And now from a client's perspective, boy, this trainer really had their ducks in a row. They really had their shit together. They sent me to the right person and they were talking the whole time. They were talking about my case. They were talking about me. They were trying to really personalize this and make sure that this made the most sense for me. And boy, does that up your standing to that client tenfold because you looked out for them. You were not afraid to send them out to a different practitioner to help them in the long run. If you always put your client's interests first, they will always come back. Well, I shouldn't say always, but a overwhelming amount of time they will come back or they will send you people knowing that you will look out for their best interests as well. So if the person goes to the PT and it is something that needs work from the medical, from the rest of the medical world, the MD, DO, physiatry world, then the PT will refer that client, your client Sharon, to a physician, to a physiatrist, to an orthopedic, and keep the bridge active. Hey, I got this person from the trainer that I work with and refer to back and forth. Here's what they were doing. We made some modifications. They weren't working. Maybe we need an image in here. And now that process has already been started. This person's already been through PT. They already have a bridge back so that they, the orthopedic knows, okay, they're already working with a PT who knows and trusts this trainer well, so we have a good bridge back. And we know that this person's going to go back to this trainer, so we know that she's going to be more compliant with her exercise program and keeping herself healthy on the back end as well. So you win all the way around. The client wins, you win, the PT wins, your business wins, everybody wins. If they do have to get to a, a physician, the physician now knows your name. The physician now has more respect for you because you were willing to call upon the medical field instead of just winging it and trying to figure it out on your own or trying to, oh, we'll do, we just won't squat today and hope it goes away. No, you made the call up the chain through the medical profession and now the physician knows who you are. So does that physician get your information directly? Sure. You've now opened the door. They now know your name. So just by working with a PT, just by having that collaboration with a PT, that strengthens your business so much. And one of the things I've heard all the time is there is a fear. And especially with me, because I also do some fitness training as well. It's not a bulk of my business, but it is a small part of it. A lot of trainers get concerned that I'm going to cannibalize their business, that they're going to send their client to me and their client's going to say, well, I'd rather train with you because you have an advanced education, you have this, you have that. Let me put your mind to ease with me at least. I can't speak for other physical therapists out there, but it, it tends to work the same way. If you are a personal trainer, a Pilates instructor, a yoga instructor, a massage therapist, or whatever, you are far more valuable to me as a small business owner, as a referral source, that you are far more valuable as that. If you send Sharon my way, and I go out of my way to poach Sharon. Now what happens is I've gained Sharon for however long she's going to train for, but I've lost you as a referral source. So everybody you would have ever sent my way is gone. You're not going to do that anymore because now you're going to be worried that I'm going to steal somebody else. So I'm not going to try to steal Sharon from you. I'm going to send Sharon back to you because I want to keep working with you. I want that relationship to be good. Because if I have a relationship with you and a different trainer and two Pilates instructors and three yoga instructors all sending me people, this is good for me as a business. It's good for you as a trainer because you now don't have to worry about sending your people through the medical profession, at least the orthopedic side of the medical profession, and losing them. You have a bridge. You have a voice in the room. So that's really the key to all this. We need to work together. And as far as the trainers go, I can't stress it enough. Don't be worried about losing your clients. Don't be worried about cannibalization. You desperately want a direct access cash-based PT on your speed dial. So let's go over why that is important at the end here. So the direct access part, what direct access means is that a person can come in and see a physical therapist using the direct access privilege without seeing a physician first. So that's great. They don't have to 
go through a physician, wait for a week and a half to see them, then try to schedule with the PT, maybe wait three to four or five days or a week to see them. Now they're three weeks out. They're not training with you for three weeks. If you're going direct access, that physical therapist is probably going to see them pretty quickly within a couple of days. Why is cash-based important? If they're paying for you, whether you're a personal trainer, Pilates instructor, yoga instructor, it doesn't matter. If they're paying for you, they're most likely paying cash. So they're pretty used to it. And if you have a good relationship with that PT, you may even be able to get that PT to work at the same rate, depending on what that rate is, as long as you're not charging way down here. But they may even be able to work that same rate, but the client's already pretty comfortable paying cash. They pay cash with you, they'll pay cash with the PT. The other thing about the cash based is, with insurance, people often worry on the PT side of things, that if I see someone direct access, then insurance is not going to reimburse me for it. They don't have a physician referral. They're going to deny the whole thing. I'm going to have to super bill the patient. The patient will then have to bill or try to get reimbursed by the insurance company. It's a whole big mess. With cash base, you take the insurance company right out of the equation. And again, cash base direct access PTs tend to see their patients a lot less frequently than your insurance based large box mill type clinics who are seeing three, four, five patients an hour, they tend to see the patient for as many times as is authorized by the insurance company. If 16 visits are authorized, they're gonna to try to see that patient 16 times. It has nothing to do with if they're getting better or not. They're gonna to try to see them 16 times because that's how many visits were authorized. So direct access, cash based, if you can find that in your neighborhood, and there's usually three or four, maybe five or six, depending on the size of the city or the town. There's a couple of them running around in every town you're in, so you should be able to find them. That's really the critical part. I'm a direct access cash-based PT. A lot of places will advertise that they are a direct access cash-based PT, so just look them up, try to find them in your area. If you're in the western New York area, I'm one of the, the several that do this. So it's a good resource. There's a couple other in my area as well. We're sort of spread around the city of Buffalo, Niagara Falls. So we're easy enough to find. But that's really the key. If you're a trainer, yoga instructor, Pilates instructor, massage therapist, acupuncturist, whoever, small business, you want, you need to have a direct access cash-based PT on board, someone who you talk to regularly. This is not just, oh, we're gonna swap business cards and never talk to each other. You want to have a consistent relationship. You want to co-promote. You want to co-advertise with these people. You want to be talking about them on your social media. And in turn, you want them talking about you on, your, on their social media. So you reach different audiences. This is the way that people like us, with our small businesses, this is how we survive. We don't have the advertising budget to rent a bunch of billboards and to post a lot of stuff. We can't afford radio advertisements, TV advertisements. We can't afford that. We're too small. But if we work together, use that co-promotion and co-advertising to our advantage, we'll get a lot more people. Your business will grow. My business will grow. And it just makes everybody better. And everybody wins at the end, including the clients. And that is the most important thing. We want to put the client's best interest first. We're not selling them a scam. We're selling them, look, we have the right people to approach this. Um, we have the right people to approach whatever issue that you may have. If I have someone who I think would benefit a lot from Pilates, now I'll have three Pilates instructors I can send to. Where do you live? You live north of me. Here's the Pilates instructor to the north. You live east. Here's the Pilates instructor to the east. That's what you want. That's what you want as a personal trainer. You want three or four PTs on speed dial so you can say, oh, you live north of me, go see Dr. Kroll, he's north of you. You live south of me, go see whoever, they're south of me, they're closer to your house. So that's exactly what you want. That's why you want to do it, put the client first, put your business first, and you will succeed. It's all good if you do it the right way. All right, so reach out to your PTs, reach out to your Pilates instructors, yoga instructors, reach out to each other, Get to know each other and collaborate. Don't be afraid of each other. Work together or again, we don't survive. So thanks for taking the time to listen. If you made it all the way to the end, I want you to hit a like, okay? I don't care where you found it, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, doesn't matter. Hit a like. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you will get a notification saying the next episode of this podcast is dropping. 
don't miss it. You'll, it'll premiere, you'll be able to listen to the premiere, you'll be one of the first. Leave a comment, share it on your social media. All this stuff helps the channel out tremendously. If you want more content and you want that content to get out to the world, you gotta do these things for me. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. I can't say that enough. Again, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. This is the fitness edition of the Dr. Crow PT and Fitness Podcast. I'll see you next time. Thanks for taking the time.